Buenos dias. <laughs> this is huge. This is the central defender that Unai Emery called unlike any he had ever coached before at any of his clubs. And yes, there are always risks with making signings like this one, foreign players moving to the Premier League, but those risks are mitigated when you get a decent deal. And at $32.5 million, which is well below our record transfer fee, and certainly this is way below Villarreal's release clause on this player, you know that not only does Villa have room to do stuff elsewhere, i.e. farther up the park, but also, let's say we do sell Pau Torres within the next five years because he's spectacular in the Premier League and say, I don't know, Real Madrid comes in for him. Well, we could still profit on this player. Whew. Let's talk about the virtues and welcome to Aston Villa, Pau <laughs> Torres. Welcome inside the parlor. As you could see, the pro version of the kit arrived. I ordered an XL from the kit bag store. You can do the same using the link in the description below. And just for reference, I'm six foot two, 250. Now, somehow my big fat fingers ordered two of them. So now I have a pro version to give away. And I'm going to do that the simplest way I know how. Our superb sponsor, 24 7 Services UK, is now on all the socials. Just follow them. That's it. You could follow one or all, doesn't matter. But when you follow any one of these or all of them, you are entered in the draw and you get to see the quality of work and the vast array of projects this company undertakes. I'll make the draw before August. Good luck. Now, I will admit, in thinking about Villa's positional priorities this summer, I didn't exactly have another center back at the top of that list, especially considering that Diego Carlos could not get a sniff, even when fully fit, against the partnership of Mings and Konza, given how dialed in they were down the stretch. However, when you consider two early rounds of the Carabao Cup, a double-legged playoff in the Europa Conference League, which precedes a group stage between August and October, that's an extra 10 potential games. And if Aston Villa is serious about taking a run at these trophies, they've got to be able to rotate their squad at times without sacrificing quality. This signing helps address that. The reason this player was so highly sought after is because he's a six foot three framed individual who cannot just defend. He initiates spearheads the attacks in some cases, which is also something in Diego Carlos's locker. And I have to commend Tyrone Mings as well, because since Unai Emery came in and just off memory, if you just take the new year, January till the end of the season, I feel like without any stats to back me up, Mings was completing a lot more of his short passes and his 20 yards or more passes. And a lot of people in Villa Nation looked at the Torres acquisition and say, well, what does that mean for Tyrone Mings then? We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Now, before I talk about all the great attributes and criteria to Pau Torres's game, a word of caution again, because not always do these types of big money moves with foreigners work out. Just ask West Ham United. They spent a fortune on two players last year as they were trying to take their assault on the Europa Conference League, which ultimately ended in historic victory, but for most of the season, they struggled to regain the kind of form that got them into that competition in the first place. And I think, in my humble opinion, in that example with West Ham and with Aston Villa in the past, one of the biggest issues you need to overcome with new players from the continent is cultural adaptation. How Torres is, was, will always be a lifer at Via Real. He was born and raised there. He supported the club as a kid. He joined the academy at age five already, and he said it himself, if I'm walking down the streets and I don't recognize somebody, I for sure will know their cousin, brother, or sister. So the fact that he was able to win a Europa League title with Unai Emery in 2021, a town of only 50,000, a beautiful place on the Mediterranean side of Spain, just north of Valencia, 
I mean, that's an incredible achievement. If I'm not mistaken, it is the smallest community to ever host a European champion. And just before that final against Manchester United, our Unai Emery told his Villarreal players, do it for Pau. And incredibly, stunningly, I mean, you couldn't write this stuff. The penalty shootout went so long that Torres was called into action and he converted Cooley in what was a pretty decisive 10-9 penalty prior to the goalkeeper's round where De Gea missed and the Villarreal goalkeeper scored. But what I'm saying to you is the guy is a local hero and icon. He will never have to pay for a lovely post-siesta sangria or some nice tapas, maybe some charcuterie cheese, maybe some mussels. Oh, that's also good. By the way, does Birmingham have a nice Spanish tapas bar? It's the one cuisine I couldn't find. Anyway, you could see how that could be a difficult thing to leave behind. But with his contract winding down next summer and with him just entering his absolute prime right now at the age of 26, I'm sure... His agent said to him, now is the time to make the biggest move in your career. Maybe not the last one. You know, Real Madrid was sniffing around among other teams. Maybe that's a move that happens in five years and Villa benefit from it. But look at the other clubs that were sniffing around as well. Bayern Munich, Juventus, and in the Premier League, Tottenham, among others. He is reuniting with Unai Emery. The two will try to win more trophies together, and I'm sure as part of the discussion, Emery will have said to Pau Torres, I will help you become a consistent and dependable member of your national team. Now, you may not think that homesickness should be a thing with a professional footballer earning all that money, but I could tell you it is. I've seen it a lot here in North America. And, you know, Birmingham is not exactly the same culturally or climate wise as Spanish cities. Like for example, you wouldn't go from Ibiza to take a holiday in B6. So hopefully Torres can assimilate quickly and maybe with the familiarity of Unai Emery and a fellow countryman and Alex Moreno and the other Spanish speaking villains like Buendia and Emmy Martinez will help him assimilate quickly and get into the project. But I have to bring it up because it is a thing. Players don't just come in and all of a sudden they hit the ground running and off they go. There is risk to these moves, and we haven't exactly had the most illustrious success with our past Spanish players. I mean, it's Carlos Hill, Antonio Luna, Crespo, Baston, now Moreno. Hopefully, Monchi and Unai Emery can ignite a new Spanish armada at Villa Park. And now a quick word from our sponsor, 24-7 Services UK. Oh my goodness, they've just joined the socials, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. If you wouldn't mind giving them a follow, I'd appreciate it because then you could see for yourself the quality of work. Oh my goodness, some of the befores and afters are beautiful. Paul Hansaker, the owner, are you the kind of guy that sits on Twitter and refreshes Fabrizio Romano's feed just to see what kind of gossip that Aston Villa's involved in? You are my source now of everything Aston Villa. Before, and it was, um, I mean, I'm going back to Teletext. You probably don't even remember that. That was always the uh, Teletext page for the Villa. As I said, I'm a fan of the Holy Trinity. I'm a fan of your Peter. And to be truthful with you, we look forward to your show's up the mighty villa thing always gives me goosebumps at the end anyway so yeah you are the the font of knowledge for aston villa that comes through to the paul ansaker household and even my dad now obviously doesn't even get a paper because he just wants to see what you say so you are the sports argus of our house now so uh so yeah it's a big compliment that is uh, it's a bit sad but um yeah. <laughs> by the way don't you love a good before and after i mean it's just like Aston Villa, before in October and now. I mean, we have landed a world-class elite defender, and we've paid for it. I've been banging on about that for so long. That's how you improve your squad. So let's present the Holy Trinity Show's three big reasons why Pau Torres is a great signing. For Aston Villa. And an honorable mention is, and maybe this doesn't matter that much to you, but he just seems like a really good down-to-earth gent. 
And if you want people to come to your project and they want to be part of it, you can't have a club full of heads. I think that's fairly obvious. And this is the culture that I think Unai Emery is trying to cultivate right now. And I've watched a lot of Pau Torres interviews over the last few days, and he just comes off as this classy, courteous, almost bashful type gentleman, which is totally juxtaposed to how he presents on the field in terms of his competitive nature. Honorable mention, Torres is very marketable. I'm thinking about Chris Heck now. I mean, we're talking about a dude who could be an ever-present stalwart on the Spanish national team, in addition to helping Villa on to glory. He's not what you'd call an ugly dude. In fact, our entire team may be the best-looking team in the Premier League, and I include the supporters in that discussion, by the way. And if you're a female viewer watching, I'm sorry, but he is married. This is his wife, Paula. Bold prediction from me. These two are going to have cute children, hopefully born as Brummies. Honorable mention, his aerial ability. And just because you're six foot three does not mean you have a divine right to win your aerial duels. But Pau Torres had a habit of winning those. In fact, 127 last season, which works out to about 3.3 per game. And his frame also made him somewhat of a clearance king. 135 last season, that averages just about four per game. And he also had 27 blocked shots. Those are very Tyrone Mings-like attributes. And when he's in the lineup, Villarreal, on average, conceded only one goal per game. And never, in any of those games last year, did Torres give away a penalty. Honorable mention, game intelligence. Like Yuri Tielemans, this cat can read the game. And I always say... You're born that way. I also wonder if elite footballers with high game IQ were also decent mathematicians in school because it is a lot about negative spaces, angles, geometry, and all of that. But when you have the ability to immediately identify gaps or spaces or weaknesses and then you can exploit those with your supreme technical ability, well, you get players like Tielemans and Torres. All right, let's get to the top three. The number three reason why Torres is a great signing for Villa, Pau's poise. This is a really unique attribute for the player because you have an elegant footballer who has a six foot three body. His calm and composure in chaos is off the charts. He has sublime technique and he knows when to use it, even under tremendous pressure. And for a guy of that stature, he never seems out of control or clumsy or uncoordinated. Those are very unique profiles when you put them all together. Big reason why Torres is a great signing number two, Pau's passing. His 63.3 passes per 90 put him in the top 5% of La Liga in that category. His successful passes, also high. Top 6% of all players in La Liga. And his completion success percentage, 85.2 over the course of the season. And of those passes, 14 were key passes, which means he's making a key pass every two to two and a quarter games. I think of all the criteria that makes Torres special, this was the attribute that Unai Emery coveted the most. We all saw the change in system. Roundabout January on, the slow, methodical buildup from the back, where we patiently waited for gaps to appear both this way and this way, bypassing the press at times. And when we played the ball through, that's when we started our attacks, usually with acceleration. Well, to find a player who specializes in all those things, bypassing or dealing with the press, finding those gaps this way and this way, passing short and passing long, which... Diego Carlos is also good at, we can now cross that off our list and address the issues farther up the field where we now need to have ruthless players that can convert those chances. And the number one big reason why Pau Torres is a great signing for Aston Villa, Pau's positioning. I've mentioned a lot of stats, aerial duels, clearances, blocks, interceptions, all those things, those defensive action moments, if you will. 
but the world-class elite defenders are able to prevent those actionable moments from happening in the first place through reading the game. And this is why I think so many clubs, sizable clubs, had Torres on their lists. His talent is in identifying and anticipating danger. He stops problems often before they occur. He's great at tracking runners, sometimes multiple runners, and that's why he often intercepts or blocks or just disrupts the opponent's passage of play, which is the reason why he's a very sound positional defensive player. Now we just need to get him into a comfortable partnership with who that's going to be is a very interesting storyline that we'll have to watch over the coming weeks. But when you think about that relationship, who he has around him, and with Emmy Martinez hopefully providing really good instruction behind him, are we looking at one of the better defensive units in the Premier League? If all of our defenders stay fit, I find it hard to believe that we're not going to shave down our goals allowed and the average over the course of the season, because last year it was 1.2 and Unai Emery made huge improvements in that department, considering that we shipped four against Leicester and Arsenal at home and three at Manchester City during that run in time. So if we can shave our average per game goals allowed from 1.2 down to one, which is what Villarreal had last year, and at the same time, increase our goals for, even if it's just by that 0.2 margin the other way, that spread between the two is the difference in table positions. Based on the rumors and links, and who knows how legitimate or credible they are, but there is a theme with these names, and that is they are all capable of playing on the left wing, the right wing as a 10 second striker, false nine, however you want to put it, and that's exciting because it means we are looking for high conversion rate players, players who can score and set up goals, but also can play in a variety of positions. One of the ones I really like is Keito Nakamura, who's playing in the Austrian Bundesliga and lit it up last year, a Japanese international. But there have been other names. Isn't it interesting that Pedro Gonçalves just had his rights increased by Sporting CP in Portugal from his previous club, Family Cao? Why would you do that? Why would you take a bigger percentage of a player's rights unless you were planning on selling? Oh my goodness, if they land that player. I don't know if I could get more excited, frankly. I think there's a ceiling on how excited I can actually get. So let's think about the possibilities here. Is it possible that we actually play all four of our you know, center backs together with Ezri Konza playing the role of the farthest right-sided of those players, because in Unai Emery's system, the right back is conservative and low, and Ezri Konza, his talent in the Premier League is that he does not get dribbled past. And that is a very good attribute to have when you're covering a lot of that space in that corner of the park. So if we look at what we have presently, and this group doesn't even include Yuri Tielemans, in my opinion, you could see there's Mings between Torres and Carlos. And if Torres takes up this position, which he loves to do, everybody else just shifts across. This allows Alex Moreno to play much higher up the park, which Unai Emery wants. I think we need to address the right side at attacking option. No offense against Leon Bailey, but I think we need more goals and more goal creation from that side. And I also think we need more flexibility and more danger from the number 10 position. Somebody who could also maybe play as a false nine or on the flanks or maybe even as a second striker, even though I like the way John McGinn looks in that position. It's going to be an interesting season for McGinn as the captain as to where he will land. What is his best position? Is it there? Is it in central midfield as an eight? Is he on the right side in a 4-4-2? Time will tell. And for all those people that said, well, you can't play with two left-footed center backs. Why? Did I miss some kind of law from the football Bible that said thou shalt not play with two left-footed center backs? That's ridiculous. That's like saying you can't play with two right-footed center backs. The difference is left-footed center backs are so rare. We now have two of them. And let's be honest, Diego Carlos is so two-footed, it's hard to tell which is his dominant foot. You have to be able to play comfortably with both feet as a center back in the Premier League. So now 
We've increased the quality and the competition in training, not just for defenders, for strikers as well. That's why we need to add attacking players to increase that balance a little bit. We've created depth for other competitions. We've created more variety for different situations. The goal is to take Aston Villa to that next step. This signing helps do that. Tielemans in, Torres in, Monchi in. Rico Richardson, another talented player we've plucked from West Bromwich Albion, one who can occupy all the front positions. We've also landed Cole Brannigan and Callum Moreland, two very high potential young players from Northern Ireland on four-year deals, which is kind of unconventional for our club. And because we already have Omari Kellerman, we could have the future spine of the Northern Ireland national team in our ranks. What's next? Probably some players have to move out, you'd think, and we've got to address goals up front. Wingers, maybe another striker, definitely an upgrade at the creative number 10 role. And all of those positions have been linked with some pretty exciting players. And the Walsall game is just over a week away. Until that time, soak up the sun, be well, and as always, this one's for you, Paul, up the mighty villa! 